with a, an instant reaction. I think that all in all that this card seemed maybe a little bit mm, it's probably 4 out of 10 for me. I think the prelims were probably the most exciting but the main card was definitely a bit of a mm, not so great. You know in hindsight maybe it would have been a bit more exciting if Connor was actually fighting even though I said in my breakdown that oh yeah Connor's just for casual fans. You know he does bring a lot more excitement and hype but so the main card was feeling a bit mm, but I think the main event saved it for me. Um, the fight between Myra, Bruna Silva and Macy Chasson was awesome while it lasted um, but the rest of the card was a bit mm, compared to like what it could have been. Compared to other pay-per-views uh, I gave it 4 out of 10, 5 out of 10 but the main event Potan, Alex Potan Pereira, he is absolutely incredible. I think he's getting better. I think he's getting more used to MMA and just being in the octagon and I really can't say enough about him. He is absolutely amazing and I'm definitely, I've definitely grown on him so much. Uh, that was amazing what he did to Yuri. He made Yuri look like Yuri didn't belong in there at all and we know how good Yuri is. Wow. 
amazing. I don't know what to say. It was just incredible. Like I said, the the rest of the card was sort of, mm, yeah. It was enjoyable, but it wasn't like super exciting. But for me, that main event kind of has given me some sort of incentive, something to be excited about, something to think about in terms of where Potan is going in his career, what more he can achieve at heavyweight as well. So there's really um, so many options for him if he can hang on to his prime a little longer, but he's looking absolutely incredible. So yeah, I think that performance really saved the day. Although, respect to the other fighters, you know, all of these fights, most of them were last minute replacements and, you know, it's hard to pull it off. I do feel a little bit sad for Yuri because he kind of got shut down entirely. There was nothing he really could have done, but at least he's shown up. So I hope that he can... I still think that Yuri's got a lot of... He's still got a lot of fights left in him, perhaps, and just maybe not against Potan. I think he still beats most light heavyweights, and uh, he'll he'll be able to collect himself. That's the other thing about late notice fights is that you can't really be too down on yourself for whatever the result is because it was last minute. The co-main event, I had a feeling that um, Brian Ortega wasn't feeling all too good. He just seemed a bit miserable during the weigh-ins and all that stuff, and it's kind of a good thing that they called that off because if he was really unwell then he probably shouldn't have been fighting. Um, but how about Dan Ige getting in there with a few hours notice looking absolutely incredible. I think that's why I wanted him to win just because I just think uh, you just want to go for the older guy, the underdog, the person that goes in later notice. Diego Lopez must have had a hell of a time with all of the changes and it does drain you emotionally and mentally so Lopez still looked really good, but I think that Ige was getting the best of him in the end. Bit of a shame for Ige, because that would have been absolutely massive for Ige if he could have finished Lopez in the last round. And I don't think anyone's gone to the third round of Lopez in quite some time, so yeah, absolutely incredible. Incredible by both guys, but yeah. Probably a blessing for Ortega because if he had have fought when he was feeling ill, he would have been he wouldn't have been able to show up and he would have been made into a highlight reel, so I'm glad that he, you know, didn't get to fight. I really wanted Ige to get that win, but yeah, still Lopez fought really well. They both did great. It was still a little bit it was it was nice to watch, but it wasn't like wow for me. Then the featured bout, Anthony Smith and Roman Delitze, I got completely wrong. Anthony Smith didn't really show up at all. I think Anthony Smith has probably had too many fights. He's taken a lot of damage now, and he probably needs to retire soon. It looks like he's just taken so much damage, so I wouldn't mind seeing Anthony Smith retire, just for his own um, quality of life and that. But I understand if he wants to keep fighting, he's a true warrior, but you can see that it's catching up to him now, and... Um, Roman fought really well because you could see how much smaller he was than Anthony. It was still a little bit of a lackluster fight though for me. Like, I didn't really enjoy that fight. They were both a little bit timid but you know they both were short notice as well. And then Myra Buena Silva and Macy Chasson. Great fight while it lasted. I was really enjoying it actually because I think the fight before was a bit oh yeah lackluster and you finally got to see some action. Uh, Myra Brenna Silva looked great compared to her last fight. She was really, really getting Macy with those uppercuts and body shots, and she was landing um, so many of her shots. And I'm kind of surprised that Macy was able to eat them and withstand them all, but props to her as well, because she is the bigger girl, and she probably, I know she has a bad um, weight cut to get down to bantam weight, but that elbow was absolutely nasty. I'm. Not too upset with that stoppage. I think it's good to stop a fight when there's a nasty cut or injury because after all, isn't that what the fights are scored on and that was so deep. I don't think I've seen a cut that deep before. I've seen maybe, you know, bigger, wider cuts or longer cuts, but I don't think I've seen a cut that deep, so that was a bit creepy. And it was actually dripping right into her eye when she was shaking her head and all that stuff, so I'm glad that that got called off. I would have liked to see it go keep going though because I, I wanted to see whether um, Macy could sort of regroup herself 
even more like she was but I wanted to see whether she had the endurance and the longevity and same for Bruna Silva we, it would have been nice to see whether she could have come back from that adversity uh, I think it was a great fight and I'm happy for Macy still not entirely sure how far she can go but I think it was a good performance by both of them, so even though you know it got stopped where it did, I think there's nothing that you can really do about that, and it was a really great fight while it lasted. Okay, MVP and Ian Gary. Okay, Ian Gary fought a very good game plan. Even though he's annoying and he, I really wanted to see MVP knock him out, and he, it feels like MVP could have. If he just had a few more skills, maybe he might have been able to do it. Ian Gary is absolutely annoying, but he's got excellent um, IQ and he manages to... The problem with Ian Gary is that he knows how to win each round in the very subtle ways. And he's getting better everywhere and he's long. And I think MVP was probably a good... It was a good opportunity now for MVP to beat Ian Gary if he was able to knock him out. And he was having success if he'd let himself go maybe earlier in the fight or more often I think he could have got the knockout maybe but you can tell how badly uh, Ian wants to win at all costs and he's so locked in there that he is not going to hesitate and I think that's what you know makes him successful and even though he's boring to watch sometimes I'm uh, sort of afraid that after this fight if he keeps getting better no one's going to be able to beat him because He's getting better everywhere and against shorter fighters they might struggle because by then I mean he controls range pretty well against those shorter fighters and he's got that length for jiu-jitsu and if he improves that he's gonna be very hard to beat so I hate to say it but Ian Gary is gonna be hard to, harder to stop the longer that he goes on undefeated he's gonna be harder to stop um, so you know respect to him for that He's clever. I hope he gets a really good matchup next. For MVP, yeah, I just wish that he could have gone for it a little more. But he is older. He's 37. He looked amazing for someone who's 37 or 36, whatever he is. But his, his striking is so high level. Um, even He looked even better than I thought that he would in the striking, so it's a shame that he couldn't have gone for it more. But mm, still a good performance. It's just a bit disappointing, though, because we don't really know how much longer he's going to be around for so yeah it's like I have to say in that Ian Gary he's gonna be hard to beat I think from now on unfortunately we're gonna have to listen to more crap but I respect him but he's he knows how to get under he knows how to get under your skin and get, get on your nerves so yeah good on him for that but yeah what I'm gonna take away from this card is Poltan he's definitely earned my respect even more he is amazing he seems to be so grounded and centered and he's really sort of grown into this legend. He's grown into this legend and yeah, that's really amazing. And I think he saved a, a sort of mm, ho-hum main card. I'm not saying it was bad, I'm just saying comparing, I'm just comparing it to say, you know, 300 or cards I've really enjoyed and you know, they, the UFC did a great job um, keeping this together. It's just been a little bit of bad luck with the matchups, but um, yeah, I would like to see Poton fight for the heavyweight title, but things are pretty messy in heavyweight at the moment. John Jones and Stipe and all that. What's going to happen with that? Is he going to have to fight for an interim belt? Who knows? Um, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for coming by. Take care and see you around the traps. Bye.